ನಮಿ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಪಾದ ಪಂಕಜ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮತ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ವಸುದೇವಸು ತಂ ದೇವ ಕಂಸಚಾಡೂರ ಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕಿ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಸಂಗೀತ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಲೆವೆನ್ and it's also coinciding with happy holidays all over the world and uh, the outset let me wish you all a very very happy holiday and i'm sure uh, this year is going to end soon and then you have a bright new year coming up so a happy new year to everyone in advance uh, let's start with this session as usual with uh, an overview of last session and some of you did attend that but uh, uh some may have missed it so we had in last session continued with uh, chapter 2 and we had studied verses from 38 to 47 and lord krishna had concluded the teaching of sankhya wisdom then he starts explaining karma yoga what is karma yoga and as i said he had approached teaching arjuna in three different ways first the philosophical way and then the ethical way and lastly the pragmatic or the social level approach so he continues today and let's see what is going to be our goal for today a quick uh, overview of session 11 we're going to start from verse 48 and lord krishna continues teaching on karma yoga and he describes the various qualities of a karma yogi what are the traits how a karma yogi is different from normal people how does he acquire those qualities what are the stages in becoming a karma yogi all that will be covered in today's session and after listening to krishna arjuna responds with a question which is a very very key question which many of us might have the same question and krishna starts answering arjuna's question so today we want to cover this topic in session 11 so i'm just giving you a quick uh, overview so let's move on to verse 48 yogasta kuru karmani sangam tyakva dananjaya siddhaya siddhayo samo samo bhutva samatvam yoga vichyate yogasta ha kuru karmani sangam tyakva ಪಾದನಂಜಯ ಸಿದ್ಧಯೋ ಸಿದ್ಧಯೋ ಸಮೋ ಭೂತ್ವ ಸಮತ್ವ ಯೋಗ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ನೌ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಯೋಗಸ್ತಃ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯೋಗೆ ತಿಷ್ಟತಿ ಇತಿ ಯೋಗಸ್ತಃ ಸ್ಥ is to stop that's a root ratam stapaya remember in the first lesson we had chapter 1 when arjuna is asking krishna to go 
and park the chariot in the middle of the battlefield. Stop. You also have stopanam establishment. So all these come from the root sta. Yoga tishtati iti yoga staha. So you have two of these, yoga and start together. What it means is one who is steadied in yoga, who is entrenched in yoga, who was stopped in yoga. Kuru comes from kru verb, action, perform. Karmani, again from the same root kru comes karmani, action. Sangam, attachment. Bond. You have that. Sangam. Joined together. The place where I was raised, Pune, there are two rivers joining together. The place is called Sangam and the bridge across is called Sangam Bridge. So very common word. Tektva, the root is Tej. To abandon to cast off. Dhananjaya is addressing O Arjuna by that name. As I mentioned before, Arjuna is called by different names and so is Krishna, called by different names depending on the quality. Arjuna was one wealth and glory. Siddhi Asidhyoho. Siddhi in success. Asidhyoho is opposite in failure. Samaha Bhutva. Samaha is level, balanced. Samatvam yogaha uchyate. Such equanimity is called yoga. So Krishna is telling Arjuna, O oh Arjuna, perform action. Being steadfast in yoga, abandoning attachment and balanced in success and failure. Such an equanimity is called yoga. So it's not a set of exercises, not a set of mere asanas, not swinging your hand and leg, not a gym. It's a different perspective altogether. Real Yoga. But yesterday I launched a Facebook group called Real Yoga. Because a lot of people misunderstand the term yoga. It comes from the root. Yuj to join. Therefore I thought I should have an information channel in which I will give more information on Real Yoga. It is going to include a lot from Bhagavad Gita and other scriptures and also what the great saints have said about yoga. Because literature is abundant in yoga and we have to just pick and choose so that people understand what is real yoga. I given the quotes of a great yogi by name Ayangar who was in Pune and he passed away at the age of 95, but he has given many quotes and I have given those quotes in the Facebook. That really defines what is yoga. So, here, Yogastha Kuru Karmani Sangam Tektva Dhananjaya Siddhyo Asiddhyo Ho Samo Bhutva Samaha Bhutva I want to give you a short illustration an example, it's actually a Subhashitam, which I learned long ago. Udaye Savita Rakto. Udaye Savita means sun. In the morning, sunrise. How do you see it? It's kind of orange color coming up, right? Rakto. That's a color. Udaye Savita Rakto. Rattascha astamaye tata. When the sun sets also, you find the same color coming in. To take pictures of sunrise and sunset, it's almost similar, same color. 
likewise sampattaucha vipattaucha mahatam ekarupata sampattaus means e in prosperity in wealth in glory vipattau vipattu means accident right vipattau viparitaha pat like samyak plus pat in times of adversity mahatam the great people ekarupata they remain the same they don't change you find many such people they could be multi millionaires but their lifestyle will be very very easy going mahatma gandhi was one such father of india as he is called but he had a very simple life even his dress was very simple so you find this is how krishna defines quality of samabhutva the qualities of karma yogi the verse is about the balance of mind under extreme conditions like the color of the rising and setting sun o arjuna live in the world by having proper attitude towards material gain the proper attitude is that you should focus on inner growth spiritual growth and not become a slave shastras and vedas are not against your gaining wealth they are not against your enjoyment they are not against your the good standard of living no dharmartha kava moksham but also pay attention to dharma and moksha the two word the end so this is what he says its attitude is important by this ch- change of attitude the advantage is material gain or material loss doesn't bother you you do not give more attention to it importance so you carry on you do value money and material but it is only subservient when i left engineering college in pune i had a professor by name dade now we used to go and ask for autographs memory and he wrote one line money is important but not the most important so i still remember that so nice was him so the main indication of a karma yogi is mental balance i know of people who have suffered extreme losses who also had a glory i had worked in a company it was owned by a punjabi sardar ji his father was a refugee from the time of independence there was partition you know he came from the pakistan side and then came to mumbai penniless he had a good house family everything was there penniless took up a small job in a shop as an electrical auto electrical shop in opera house and he used to do the, all the errands you know arranging the store and then uh, giving out uh, materials to people he gradually learned and he was very dedicated then he took an agency for bata tires you know automobile tires bata used to make tires in those days in germany and he ordered a shipment no insurance in those days the ship sank and so did his heart <laughs> he couldn't get the supplies but he was not a weak person he was a very strong person he rose again his family suffered they were not comfortable at all he had three sons and daughter he built up gradually his own shop took an agency from wood auto in the uk wanted to manufacture a few things started manufacturing got some government aid bought a piece of land in mumbai and from that onwards his graph started rising glorious he built up 
several companies and put his sons in charge of each company. They were all smart because they had suffered in their life. They knew what it was to have even one rupee. So they were very careful, but at the same time, they expanded very well and this, they still kept their bad days in mind. And I learned personally a lots of things from this company managing director. That's how things are. And I know there are lots and lots of not only individuals, but even companies and uh, countries which go through this kind. Japan, for example, was devastated after the war, but they rose again like Phoenix. And today you see how it is that people are simple. You go there, there is no theft, there is no crime, very little crime. Small country. How did it come up? Because karma yogis, they, they focused on action and they never forgot the old times. Going further, <clears throat> Sangam Tattva. Sangam, as I mentioned, is this attachment to materialistic gains here. Now, for example, let's say you love your car, a new car you bought, you won't even tolerate even a scratch on it. Let's assume that you sell it to somebody. Do you worry about it anymore? Next day, even if there is a scratch or it uh, is damaged, you don't really care because it is not your own. There is no attachment. So this is how attachment comes. Because you pay so much of attachment that you cannot tolerate it. The moment it goes off to someone else, you are least concerned. Siddhayo asiddhayo ho, in success or failure. How do you balance it? By having the appropriate attitude. It does not mean you should not work for success. Work for success, be successful, but don't gloat over it. Have a balanced mind. There are people who go and uh, do a rock and roll dance when they get even say ten dollars in a lottery. <clears throat> the same people start crying in the moment the money is lost. But don't do that because these are common success and failure come repeatedly in cycles. Therefore, maintain a balanced mind. And that is called yoga. So going further, verse 49. Dure nahevaram karma buddhi yoga dananjaya buddha saranamandicha Kripanaha falahetavaha. Durena. You know very well, Dura means far away. He certainly, Avaram is not desirable. Karma action, Buddhi Yoga. Buddhi Yoga is a yoga of wisdom. Dhananjaya is the name for Arjuna, O Arjuna. Buddha Saranam, take refuge in wisdom. Anbicha, Sandhi there, Anu plus Isha. Isha means to desire, to seek, to wish. Kripanaha, we had this word before, referring to misers, wretched people. Falahetavaha. Falam means fruit. Falasya hetuhu. A reason. Hetuhu is reason or motive for the fruit. Translated into summary, far lower than the yoga of wisdom, motivated by results, O Arjuna. Seek refuge in wisdom. Wretched are those whose motive is the fruit. Now, there are two types of people. 
one who act work he is called the karmi one who does the work karmi and the other is karma yogi what's the difference karmi is one who gives importance to the material gains alone he is motivated by the fruits would you not like to have a bmw car driven by that motive he doesn't care about the methods there are so many cases where people steal cars but karma yogi <clears throat> is different karmi doesn't attach any importance to spiritual growth at all he is only interested in material gains karma yogi is only one who may also act and work but with a different attitude karma dhurena hyavaram the karma or work of a materialist is far far inferior inferior to what to buddhi yoga the karma yoga done by a karma yogi here buddhi yoga really means karma yoga and why is karma yoga called buddhi yoga because the main feature of karma yoga is not really in action the main feature of karma yoga is in the attitude it has to be healthy therefore arjuna buddho sharanam manvichcha resort to karma yoga also again called buddhi yoga adopt the right attitude what happens if we don't adopt it i told you you should say do this at the same time also tell what will happen if you don't do it you have krishna is explaining otherwise if you don't adopt it what happens kripana phala hetavaha look at those unfortunate miserly fruit chasing people motivated by only materialistic desire you will fall into that category you will fall into the category of those misers those wretched people who do not bother about spiritual growth at all so from verse 48 onwards krishna goes on to the basic definitions of karma yoga the first definition he gave was samatvam yoga uchyate balance of mind is karma yoga you will find he is giving him more definitions in the subsequent verses coming in he also explains the qualities of a karma yogi going further to verse 50 buddhi yukto jahati ha ube sukrta duskrte tasmat yogaya yujjasva yogaha karmas kaushalam buddhi yuktaha buddhaya yuktaha that's how it's split up endowed with wisdom jahati is casting off cast off ikha in this life ube both sukruta duskrte sukrutam cha duskrutam cha it's a sandhi sukrutam cha duskrutam cha good and evil deeds the smart therefore yoga ya to yoga you just for coming again from the root yuj join devote yoga ha yoga karmas in action kaushalam referring to skill endowed with wisdom that is a evenness of mind 
one casts off in this life both good and evil deeds. Therefore, devote thyself to yoga because yoga is skill in action. What is the result of following Karma Yoga? People ask, you know, result oriented. I am spending so much of time in listening to this Gita or reading it. What is the use? Do I get any results? Is there any benefit coming out of it? Certainly. You will start learning very valuable lessons in life. Know about the values of right attitude. Look at the misery of the rat race. Shun it. And eventually long for permanent happiness. You know, everybody thought America is a very rich country. There are big houses, big cars. And uh, very comfortable living, all houses are air conditioned, heated well. You have the latest of gadgets, there's so many restaurants to eat, everything is fine. But are the people very happy with all that wealth? Question you should ask. They may superficially say, Oh, I am very happy. But you go deep into their heart, you will find. There are many things that they worry about. Watch the television, nothing else is required. You don't have to really sit there for a long time. Half of them are about killing, shooting, and uh, the misery of poor people, and so on. It's unnerving, sort of. So, Karma Yoga is something which will then eventually lead you to Jnana Yoga. Sukrita Dushkrite says he discovers his own nature by giving up Sukritam and Dushkritams, good and evil deeds, and becomes free ultimately from all the Punyams or Papams as a result of self knowledge. Now, that stage is not right now, it is you have got to go up the pyramid, so it's not easy. So, there are stages. The first stage itself is Karma Yoga, which is action. The smart Yogaya Yujjaswa. Therefore, Arjuna, adopt Karma Yoga. Karmesha Kaushalam, efficiency and skill in action, is Karma Yoga. So, if people react, you know, to situations, sometimes if there is a problem, impulsively they react. Or, some people say, I will not act, be inert. Both are wrong. Here it talks about intelligent action. Kausalam, skill. There is a skill in every job that people do. You just go to uh, some of the restaurants. I know in India, I used to watch with wonder how they make these masala dosa, I know. They have a huge hot plate in which there are maybe six dosas being done at the same time, and the guy who pours it perfectly circular. And then, if it is a masala dosa, he puts the masala and then folds it neatly. Typically, about say 12 inches in dia. There are also dosas which are about four feet long, specially made, long ones, and they roll it. Also, those are made into a cone, you know. I saw one, how does he beautifully do, turn it into a cone. You see, North in restaurant, they have something called, what do you call the, uh, uh, Rumali Roti, they call it. It's like a handkerchief, a huge one. Then the chap flips it by hand. And then it goes on like a flying saucer. Skilled in action. They're all skills. You see how they uh, look at the wayside restaurants, how they have coffee, you know. 
it beats gravity. They'll do it almost horizontally with a cup and uh, uh, a glass in hand. That's, those are all skills. So he says, develop those skills in yoga. Yoga is skilled in action. Again, real yoga. As I'm giving you more definitions of it. So Adi Sankara gives this in a different perspective altogether. He says, with proper attitude, the karma yogi skillfully turns the very same karma to attain liberation. The change is brought about purely by a change in attitude. You can use a knife to clear the bushes, cut the overgrown branches. You can also use it to kill, right? Same knife. Use the God-given voice to speak soothingly is an attitude. Eyes to read the right things. The ears to hear the right things. Like those famous three monkeys of Mahatma Gandhi. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. So these are steps to enhance one's knowledge. Instead of watching useless movies, focus something on the inner growth. So yoga is skill in action. Karbasa kaushalam. Kaushalam refers to skill. Going further, verse 51. Karma jan bhutti yuktahi. Palam tekva bani shinaha Janma bandha vidir muktaha Patam gachanti anabayam Karma jam A jam means born. Born out of karma is karma jam. In fact, the word janma comes from jam. Janma is birth, right? Karma jam, action born. Buddhi yuktaha, those possessed with intellect. He, indeed, of course, palam tektva, having abandoned the fruits, manishinaha, the wise Janma Bandha Vinir Muktaha so Hinduism Sanatana Burma believes in rebirth so here it is freed from the fetters of birth Padam the abode Gachanti go to Anamayam is beyond all evil beyond all evil so what does it mean the wise who are possessed of knowledge having abandoned the fruits of their action and being freed from the fetters of birth go to the place which is beyond all evil we saw two qualities earlier of karma yogi adopting certain attitudes buddhi yuktaha Let's say this is stage one. What is the next stage in following the Karma Yoga? The second stage is Karma Jam Palam Tektva. Not over worried at the material results, which is quite contrary to the business objectives or business culture, you can say. I want to give you some examples here. You know what happened to those who had only the material objectives in mind? <laughs> Lehman Brothers, Rajaratnam, Rajat Gupta of McKenzie, Ramalingam Raju of Satyam Computers, most recently, day before. IAS officer, Chief Secretary of Tamil Nadu government, 
Rama Mohan Rao, one of the coveted positions of a very highly educated officer of the government, Rod Blagovich, governor of Illinois. You know what happened to all these people? It does not prove that only material objectives do not really give you real happiness. It may put you behind bars. <laughs> So the process of growth, if you see, all living beings grow. Most animals grow horizontally, like a cow or a horse or a dog. Plants grow vertically like human beings. So along with our physical growth, we also need to grow in knowledge and skills, emotionally and also spiritually. Not just IQ, but EQ to emotional quotient. So in this verse, you see there is a word called Manishinaha. Manishinaha, you see here. Manishinaha. Manisha means Atma. Atma Jnanam. The wise is Atma Jnanam, self-knowledge. So Adi Shankara wrote a beautiful verse called Manisha Panchakam. Some of you might have heard of it. When he was walking, there was a low caste person who came across and he asked him to move away from his path. And that person, he said, are you asking me, my physical body to move away or my soul to move away? Only then Adi Shankara realized that it was a person, none other than Lord Shiva himself. Then he composed Manisha Panchakam. These five treasures. Manisha also means conviction. A very strong belief. So in fact, the whole verse ends with the word Manishini. Manishi means Yani. One who is very clear about his convictions. So one should attain that knowledge also, which is called Jnana Yoga. So the third stage is that after Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga. Manishinaha Bhuvaha. The final stage after all this, the Janma Bandha Vinir Muktaha, attaining Mukti and freedom from the fetters of birth, which is a goal in Sanatana Dharma, in the bondage of birth. You might have heard that great composition by Adi Shankara on Bhaja Govindam. He sings, Bhagavad Gita, Kinchita Dita, Ganga Jalalava, Kanika Pita, Sahatra Biyena, Murari Sahadabhiyen Murari Samacha Kriyate Tasya Menanacha Bajagovindam 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 If one reads a little bit of Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita Kinchita Tita. Little bit. Ganga Jalalava Kanika Pita. Drinks a drop of water from the river Ganges. And if he worships Lord Murari, even for a small moment, he won't have a dispute with the Yama, the Lord of Death. Let's say Yamena na Charcha. Iha Samsare. Bahudustare, it goes on. This samsara is full of miseries. Geyam Gita Nabasahasram Deyam Sripati Rupa Bachasram The Bhagavad Gita and the Vishnu Sasnam should be sung. 
the form of Vishnu should be meditated upon, says Paja Govindam. So, there are many, many, many such so thing in that he talks about Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Maranam. Rebirth and that, death and death. So, ultimately, the person who becomes the ultimate yogi, the jnana yogi, who attains the top of the pyramid, he is freed from the petters of birth and it does not affect from anybody, anything. His goal of a yogi is Jeevan Mukti, where the mind becomes light and enjoyable. So once the karma is exhausted, Anamayam Padam Gachanti. Anamayam here, Padam is the ultimate goal, is Brahman or Ishwaraha which is anamayam. Anamayam means free from all kinds of evils. So this verse tells us actually the stages beginning from Karma Yoga, then to Jnana Yoga, and then to Jivan Mukti, and finally Videga Mukti. There are people who have attained the Videga Mukti in India. Raghavendra in Mantralayam Road. Sadashiva Brahmendral in Nerur. There are many such Mahans in India who have gone to that level. So the second chapter of Gita is the core of Bhagavad Gita complete. It is the almost summary of Bhagavad Gita. I should say it's a foundation on which the superstructure of balance 16 chapters are built. Going further, let's go to next verse. Yadate Moha Kalilam. Yeda te moha kalilam buddhir veti tarishyati tata gantasi nirvedam srotabhyasya srutasya cha. Yeda when te you are. Moha Kalilam. Mohasya. Moha means delusion. Mohasya of delusion. Kalilam is dense, like forest, you know, dense forest. Buddhi is intellect. Veti Tarishasi, the root is V plus Ati plus Tri to cross. Veti Tarishasi means crosses or surpasses. Tada, then Gantasi, one who goes or attains Nirvedam, being unconcerned or indifferent. Srotav Jasya, of what is yet to, it comes from Sru, to listen. The root is root, Sru. Sruti, you see, Sruti is a name for Vedas. What was heard? Srotav Jasya, of what is yet to be heard. Srutasya, of what is heard in the past. So when your intellect crosses beyond the mire of delusion, beyond the dense forest of delusion, then you shall attain indifference to what has been heard and what is yet to be heard. What will Karma Yoga do? What is its impact? Buddhihi moha kalilam vyati tarisyati. The intellect will overcome confusion. What confusion? Dharma, artha, Kama or Moksha. What are the preferences? Which one to be followed? Do you follow all of the four? 
Abhiveka is called lack of determination or discrimination. It's called mohaha. And this mental confusion on priorities, what to do, how to live a life. Every day we face conflicts, right? That alone, that confusion is called kalilam. Kalilam means the dirt or impurities. So it's actually intellectual impurity here in this case. The karma yoga helps you to get clarity of thoughts. It will help you to know what are the priorities in life. Moksha is not just heaven alone or the other world. Like most people think it's a luxurious world. Moksha is really inner maturity. Tata Gantasi Nirvedam. When this conflict within your mind goes away, Nitya Nitya Vastu becomes Viveka comes. Then the natural consequence is dispassion. Nirvedam really means dispassion here. Dispassion. So, the intellect part of it is stressed here. The Karma Yoga leads you to that level of intelligence which you acquire by practice, by rituals, by performing certain actions with intelligence, so as to overcome this confusion. And at that time, you will attain the indifference to what has been heard and what is yet to be heard. That you don't go by what someone says and what you have heard, but you take your own decisions. And how does it happen? Going further, Sruti Vipprati Pannate Yedas Chasyati Nishchala Samadabhatala Buddhis Tatha Yogam Avapchasi Sruti Viprati Panna Sruti, I told you also Vedic revelation, what was heard by those seers in those good old days, because there is no author for Vedas, it was only heard and transmitted by word of mouth. So Sruti is what is heard. Viprati Panna is perplexed by by what is heard. The mind gets totally confused because by hearing various Sruti Vakyas, the statements of the ritualistic portion of the Vedas, which talk about external sources. When you have an ailment, you go to a doctor, let's say he practices allopathy and he would give you some pills, recommend certain medicines to be taken, but the ailment doesn't go off. You go to the Ayurvedic doctor, he says it's a, your Vayu is creating all the trouble, he has got different set of medicines, organic medicines, says so you take that. It doesn't work. Go to homeopathy. He gives you small globules of pills and you take it, but don't take coffee, don't take onion, don't take garlic. Puts 100 conditions. You go to a priest, he says you must do puja for Satya Narayana or uh, do puja to Anjaneya. He gives you his own solutions. You go to an astrologer, he says the planets are not favorable to you. You should do some pariharam for Shani or Rahu. Imagine what happens after all this. You heard from different people different versions of cure. But you get confused in the result, isn't it? 
you have to take your own decisions. You know, I, I went through my own case. <laughs> Two years ago, I had a cataract uh, surgery and then following that, unexpectedly complications developed. I was in extreme pain. I had to go to a dozen doctors, each one recommending their own way. Somebody said you should uh, do some surgery and somebody said you've got some other problem. Ultimately, I decided I would not go to anybody. I would take cure myself. Purely by prayers. I wrote in my blog a one-page article titled Pain, Prescription and Prayer. Pain followed by prescriptions which only intensified my pain and eventually I had prayers that cured me. That really cured me. So you have to take your own decision. How do you do that? She says, go to internal resources. Yata samado sasyati. Samadhi here doesn't mean great. Here it is referring to your Atma yourself. That which abides in Atma. Nischalaha sasyati. Achalaha. Nishchalaha means without doubt and mistake. Now, such a person is really called a person of steady mind, one who is called Sita Pregnyaha, the one who does not depend upon anyone except himself, by himself, his true self. Self with the capital, yes, I should say. Then and then only. Tada yogam avapsasi. Only then you realize what is called self realization. So this is uh, a very key verse in the chapter 2 and one of the most important. So, Karma Yoga here is a way of life. It's not just going to a yoga center. Here it gives a lot of importance to spiritual progress. Material progress is considered subservient. Not that you don't do progress materially. It is secondary to spiritual progress. Such a life is called religious life or karma yoga. Now, with these words, actually, Krishna concludes the teaching of karma yoga and is waiting for Arjuna's response. Now, Arjuna has heard all of it now. He is asking his question. Arjuna Uvacha Stita Pragyasya Khabasha Samadhistasya Keshava Stita Dihi Kim Prabhashet Arjuna Uvacha, Arjuna said, very simple. Sthita Prajnasya. Sthitaha Prajna Yasya Saha. Sthita means very steady. Prajna is wisdom. You know, in talking also sometimes, I've, we've used the word pragnaha. In India, it's, 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 is he a big pragna? Is he such a great person, a wise person? Sita pragna yasya. One who has steady wisdom. Not just occasional wisdom. Steady wisdom. Sitaha. Ka. What? You know, when we taught easy Sanskrit, we had this Theories of questions, seven questions, if you remember. Ka, Kim, Ko, and all that, right? They're all coming here. Ka, what? Basha. Description. Samadhistasya. Here, Samadhi is said it's Atma, not really grave. Merged in the super conscious state. Keshava. Addressing Krishna, O oh Krishna, Sitadihi, one of study wisdom. Kim, how? 
Prabhashe, does he speak? Kim, how? Asit. Does he sit? Asanam comes from that. Asit. A chair or a place to sit. A seat is called Asanam. Asit. How does he sit? Brajet, walk. Kim, how? So Arjuna really speaks his mind here. He calls the person of wisdom who is a Jnani by different names here. One he calls him as Sita Pragnaha, a person of steady wisdom, conviction. Or Samadhistaha, one who is established in Samadhi, who is established in his true nature. He also uses a term called Sitadihi, which means a person of clear knowledge. So he wants to know how different is this person? Is he like me? Or is different in what way? How does he talk? How does he conduct himself? How does he walk gently or with a fast pace or with a straight shoulder? How does he even sit? On a sofa or a bed of nails, like yogis are portrayed, what is the difference between him and others? How does he distinguish himself? You see, there are many such questions coming up. Obviously, when you say a jnani or a yogi, he must be somebody with certain characteristics, certain traits. So, Quite rightly, Arjuna is asking these questions. Who is this person? I want to know more about him. In what way is he different from others? Please tell me, Krishna, give me a description of him. You, in Sanskrit, you have word Lakshanam. This is how a person appears. Raja Lakshana means one who looks like a king. So there are different kinds of outer significance one can see. So this VIP, so called Jnani or Karma Yogi, how does he look like? What does he do? So these are the questions that come from Arjuna. And Krishna answers all these questions, which we will cover in our next session, next Saturday, same time. So until then, wish you all a very, very happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, and a very happy New Year to launch. Om Sri Hara Ye Namaha, Om Sri Hara Ye Namaha, Sri Haraye Namaha. With that, we conclude session number 11. And now I'm going to unmute you all to have any comments or any questions. Let me unmute all of you. Okay. Any comments, questions? Guruji, Namaste is Balaji. Yes, Balaji. Guruji, will you be sharing the PPTs also? Because I get the links for the YouTube videos. Will you be sharing?